Yo, 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 what is going on, ROK Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today I am back again giving you guys some of the most quality, good, good information and quality education. I think I said that backwards, but we're going to stick with it because I feel good right now. Kind of. Let's continue. All right. Before we get started, as always, which is going to be an awesome episode today, make sure you sub, like, ring the notification bell, and if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up that Discord link, which you can find in the pinned comment and description down below. Okay. So today, we are going to be talking about how you, as a kingdom, as a jump project, as an alliance, multiple alliances, how you are going to be able to keep the most amount of active players alive in your kingdom early on, and therefore also having the highest amount of player retention, which will hopefully carry over into future zones, past zone one, into zone three and then hopefully maybe even if you're lucky carry over into your first kvk and maybe future ones as well and i'm going to explain why zone one player activity and retention is by far the most important thing that a kingdom you as a kingdom you as a jump project have to really pay attention to really nurture give that some tlc tender love and care if you know what i mean if you want to be able to have the most amount of player activity possible for the longest amount of time. Okay, so let's first start off with assessing that you have six provinces in your zone one. Now, the reason why this is important is because it can play out a couple different ways. Then mo uh, let me start off with, well, let me start off with, I guess, number two, one and a half here. One of the initial ways that you can go about increasing player activity and retention is don't hoard do not just take over everything in zone one you have to remember that the players and the other alliances here right like let's say you're one alliance you're a group of alliances you're a jump project remember that sharing is caring and if you know what i mean and understanding that organic growth is really important you do not want to give an impression that you are shutting out other alliances before they even have an opportunity to develop. You don't know if one alliance or another, whether they're outside of your family or it's just other alliances that are all single, independent ones in the same province, are going to be friends or allies. Maybe they'll be longtime players. Maybe they'll play for two, three, four years and they'll fight with you to the death of all their troops every single KVK. You don't know that. And so what I often find happens in the majority, if not arguably almost every kingdom, is that either one or two alliances kind of get this impression in their mind where, you know, we need to take over our province in zone one, or we need to establish dominance, where it kind of by default pushes out other alliances because they feel like, okay, well, man, I can't even get to a zone two gate. I can't get to a zone one adjacent gate. I can't get a couple objectives. You know, why would people keep playing in arguably that type of an environment? And so these are things to really understand. And then we look at it beyond that, which is, okay, well, how do we potentially solve some of that? And I'm going to give you one of the best tips that I don't even think I've ever told anyone, which is try to think about your provinces about how can you most effectively split your province to keep the most amount of active alliances that would have the most opportunity to grow and fill out that province that can then carry over to your zone two and later on your zone three and one of the things that i've pretty much have always done in any of my jump projects is we've always tried to keep the highest level of activity and therefore player retention by sharing zone one provinces with as many alliances as possible. Now, th now this also does not mean in the same breath that we're talking you need to share with 10 alliances, but I truly believe that sharing these areas with anywhere from about three to four alliances, I would say three is a good number, four if you're really able to make it work, is actually going to be better for you in the long run. Why do I say this? Because you have to think about that you have a very small cap member capacity in the beginning. You're only going to be able to raise it so high before zone two passes open. And 
this will also limit. So let's just throw out a number here. Let's just say on average, maybe you're going to be able to get to an 80 uh, an 80 player member capacity, right? It's probably 80, 90, but let's just say for sake of argument, it's 80. So you can get to an 80 member capacity. And then let's say that you are going to be able to have, uh, let's say four alliances there, right? Okay, so we have 80 times four. That brings us to 320 players. Now, let's multiply that by six because of the provinces. So that brings us to 1,920 players, almost 2,000. But let's now let's drop that in half. So let's divide that. And let's say that, okay, well, maybe you guys take an approach where you're just going to have two alliances in each province, right? Or, or somewhere around there. Now you're looking at 960, maybe somewhere between 850, 960 that you're going to have. You have to think of it like this. The total amount of players, right? Well, first off, before I even get there, player drop-off is a real thing. Every kingdom faces player drop-off. You are losing players on day two, on day three, on day four. You're just not losing them in, the, in hundreds or in troves, right? It's like a slow trickle effect. You lose people because they're brand new to the game. They're trying it out. Maybe they find out about jumping. So they're like, okay, I'm just going to stop playing here. I'll go and get ready to make an account. Maybe they try the game out for a bit, but then they stop playing because you have to factor in the new people that download the game that are testing. And usually the people that are staying the longest are typically jumpers or players that are re-rolling, right? The lowest percentage of people that are carrying over for a long term are brand new players to the game. And it's understandably so because they don't really know a lot. So the moment they feel like they get an edge, they're probably more likely to pursue something like jumping or maybe even re-rolling and then a smaller percentage of them will actually carry on and play the account. This is, these are just standard trends, right? If you, if you played in a lot of servers, right, you can kind of see these happening. So from here, the idea is that we want to keep the most amount of players in the kingdom for as long as possible so we can work on basically educating, informing, and giving them a good experience so they can either want to stay in the kingdom, maybe join and be a part of whatever the big group is there, or just believe in whatever mission statement from King's Mails that are being sending out where they will actually contribute and therefore convert over to consistently fight in KVKs for that kingdom, right? That's kind of the end goal. You want to have the most amount of activity, the most player retention, and then you want to get the most amount of fighters coming over to participate in your KVKs. And so by having the, you have to understand, zone one is the foundation, right? Depending on how much activity you have in zone one, that amount of activity will only lessen when you get to zone two and lessen again when you get to zone three. So you have to make sure that you have the highest amount of activity and therefore player retention in zone one if you want to be able to build off of that foundation that you set because you only get one chance to do it, right? Depending on the decisions that are made in every province will heavily impact how your kingdom plays out activity player retention wise and then how much true fighter conversion you get from the kingdom over in the kvk so this is why it's important to have more alliances now whether you split it in thirds and fourths and fifths however you do that it's important to recognize what those long-term benefits are right sure maybe it'll be tighter than you might like maybe than you're used to but I would rather sacrifice 10, 20, 30 flags if that means I'm going to have two to three times the amount of player activity and therefore retention than if I just want those for myself, right? It's a want versus a need. You may want to have more flags, but you don't need to have them. So it's all about thinking big picture beyond what is just right in front of us and maybe what just benefits only our alliance or a few alliances. So this is one of the reasons why, again, I love these kinds of games because kingdom builders are just so much more in depth than I really think a large portion percentage of the player base gives them credit to or credit for. And when we really start thinking about these kind of kingdom management perspectives, um, how player psychology plays into it, man, you can really start dissecting, excuse me, I got some of my eye, how and why players choose to do things the way they do, alliance leaders and officers choose to do things the way they do, and how a kingdom starts can really have a net positive or net negative effect on your kingdom for how it will develop over a period of time. Okay, I think that might do it for me here. Again, I hope you guys found this video to be enjoyable, beneficial, maybe even insightful. 
I would love to hear what you think. So if you are someone, if you connect on what I'm saying, if maybe you understand it, maybe you're you know a little bit iffy on it, if you've even seen this happen, right? If you've been in a kingdom where you've had you know, 10, 20 active alliances compared to maybe 30 or 40 active alliances in zone one, how have you noticed that has carried over? How has player drop off affected how your zone one foundation was able to carry to zone two, zone three and KBK? And let me know if you have been noticing or even if you have noticed these types of changes and the flow that I've been describing yourself. Or even if people have sent Alliance mails or Kings mails out about it, I'd love to know. Let me know anything and everything in those comments down below. That is it for me. Until next time, I'll catch you later.